Okay, welcome back to another Swans Cast video where we're going to react to yesterday's disappointing loss at home to Bristol City, which, you know, is a tough topic to talk about, a bit of a tough one to take, but we're going to dissect it as best we can, talk about our opinions about the match, how we see it and what it means going forward. Before we start, though, as always, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy what we're talking about. Let us know what you think of our opinions. If you disagree, if you think we're talking complete rubbish, let us know and um, get involved in the conversation and subscribe as well to keep up to date with all of our content. I want to welcome Lee, who's back uh, as normal. And we've also got Jordan with us today. So welcome, Jordan. Thank you, boys. Thank you for having me. No worries. Always, uh, always a pleasure. So um, Welcome back. <laughs> where do we start with that game then, boys? I think if we have a little bit of a match of what we thought overall of the match, and then we'll maybe get into the, I think, a good way to approach it because it... It's a bit of a cliche with football, but a tale of two halves, and I think that game sums that up entirely. So, um, Lee, I'll start with you today. So, overview of the match then. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one. I won't, I won't uh, go into the details just yet at the, at the beginning. Um, a couple of things I won't touch on later, but I think just on the whole, just gutted because we should have won the game. We should have been three, four nil at half time, and we had what I've been asking for in the last like three or four videos. Um, just asking for that sort of tempo performance. We've been crying out for it, and we got it. Um, we got it and more, actually, in the first half. They were brilliant. I thought they looked sort of back to their old self. Um, then somehow we lost the game, so just, uh, like, devastated at the end of the game. Really, that's all That's all I can say. That's, yeah, that's fair enough. Jordan, what, how did you see it? Yeah, 100% agree. Um, you know, you look at the last week after, after Huddersfield, you know, that, that well... Nothing really needs to be said about Huddersfield, but we got back on track then against uh, against Coventry. Yeah, you know we got we got the result, and all right, the, even though the performance wasn't great against Coventry, we we still grinded out the result, and it was something to build on. So, you know, to lose in the manner that we did yesterday, you know, it was same as Lee. It's just overall a little bit disappointing on a Taylor two halves, really. Yeah. So my take on it again, like I already said, Taylor two halves. Um, yeah. I've seen some people commenting on. The fact that we're in this rut and our performance levels have been bad for weeks. Yeah, they were bad, like you mentioned, Huddersfield, Coventry, Nottingham Forest. But we played really well in the first half yesterday. Everything everyone's been criticising and asking for was addressed in that first half. So I don't think we can have that continuation. Something happened, obviously, half-time, whether we didn't adjust to changes or whatever it was, change of system from Bristol, and they were obviously going to come out more fighting. But we ended up losing it in a manner that... We haven't really done this season and that is obviously the disappointing aspect of the game so I think that's a good brief um, overview of the match so let's get stuck in then obviously Bristol won 3-1 in the end um, Swansea took the lead through a penalty in the second half even though we were largely dominated the first half and then Bristol scored three afterwards but yeah largely dominant in the first half then so go to you first then Jordan how did you what did you make of the first half performance specifically um, compared to like what you mentioned about the previous games, well, they they just upped the intensity completely. It, it was a performance that we needed. You know, the only thing that was missing from that was literally the the goals, which I think Cooper said and Ni Nigel Pearson has also said as well. Like we should have been two or three up at this point. The only thing that was missing from that first half performance was was the goals. You know, it was everything that us fans are asking for. But we just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. No, that's fair. So, I think um, yeah. on a red card. <laughs> yeah, on a red card. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's just a, it was just a weird game in general. Like that first half, like I said, was everything that we we could have asked, you know. And we were just waiting for that goal. Like yeah. you look look at some of the individual performances, like especially from Danda in that first half. I was thinking, right, okay, you know. We're definitely finding our feet again. We're getting back on track, and I think I think <laughs> half time I, I just killed the momentum a bit. You know, I, I just just yeah. changed the game completely. Yeah. I, I kind of had a feeling where if we don't score in the first half, then that's obviously it, it's going to be very obvious what I'm going to say. But I hope you can see what I'm about, what I'm trying to say. If we hadn't scored in that first half, then the second half for us was always going to be that little bit harder, clearly for the fact yeah. that the momentum would have just taken it out of the game completely. And well, it Bristol, gives Bristol City were never going to come in and come out with that, well, being so bad in the second half after that awful performance in the first half, were they? 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think if we had gone in one or two goals up at half time, I think, you know, the mentality just changes in both dressing rooms. But yeah. Yeah. the fact that it was still nil nil after, you know, such a good first half from our perspective, it it almost gave Bristol City a, a bit of a bit of hope and you could see that then as well as the game went on. Yeah, it's disappointing for us to go in nil nil after being probably the most dominant I've seen us in any game this season. And yeah. for them, they're like, Oh my god, we still haven't conceded like Yeah. You know, they changed their shape, they changed their game plan and well, yeah, the changes I guess caught us off guard, but we'll discuss second half a little bit more in a second. Leo, did you make the first half performance? Yeah, I'd probably uh, I'd probably go as far as saying that's probably the best forty five minutes we played all season, minus the goals. We were just completely dominant and uh, yeah, minus the goals. That's probably the best I've seen us all season. They they just looked sharp. Everybody was getting on the ball. The ball was moving quicker. Danda was seeing some lovely balls in. Low looked sharp. They haven't seen for the last couple of games. Um, I was in there. You know, it was just it was it was it was pretty much the perfect performance minus the goals. So, but you know, like we've watched the Swans long enough, and you know, and you like typical Swans. You think it's going to be one of them days. There's so many games that we've battered teams and just haven't scored. Yeah. And when I think it was like the third or fourth chance where they just sort of scrambled it off the line and you know, always bouncing off defenders and getting off the line and keepers making wonderful saves. You're just thinking, oh, it's going to be one of those days and you could feel it coming. And I think I think you're right in what you say. When half time came and you're in the dressing room thinking, oh, we know we should be 4-0 up. And in the other dressing room, they're saying, right, well, look, we're still in the game. And then yeah. you could definitely see that second half. And they come out thinking, we've, we've, we've probably weathered the storm and uh, we came out better then. Well, they know they've got to come up playing better, and if they're coming up playing better, they give themselves a chance because they kind of rubbed their luck a little bit already. So, um, for me, then first half, like I said, I haven't seen us play so well in a long, long time, especially in one half of football. I know it's uh, overall statistics for the match, but we have actually had twenty-one shots in the match, eight on target. So I think most of them probably came in the first half, and that says it all really in terms of um. I can I can actually tell you the first half stats. 13 shots, 6 on target. So, you know, 6 shots on target in one half of football and you can't even score a goal. We probably haven't had that in most games all season. Like, yeah, that many exactly. shots on target. It's just, uh, I just, just a... Yeah, go on. Sorry, go on. No, no, go on. <laughs> I think that's just uh, just a credit to Bentley and goal, isn't it? You know, yeah. the game there's life oh, yeah. yesterday, so... Yeah. It's, it's one of those, I mean, if you're, if you're the opposition fan, you know, you... You just hate it, but if that was if I was worth money yesterday, you, you'd be absolutely. And I'm that. I'm sure we've done that. We did it to Leeds away last season. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Routledge scored well. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they battered us all game. So Any excuse. We've had games where we've done that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a better that's a, that's a better topic to talk about. Boys, we talk about the Leeds game. <laughs> yeah, let's just. Year, I think I'm. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a. Go on, Lee. I know. I was going to say I had a, after the Wales game. I obviously got a bit excited. Had a few beers, and I was looking back at like. Some old tweets I was thinking, like, uh, can't wait for an away day where Cooper does a fist pump and the one that kept coming up was the Leeds away one. Yeah, and, yeah let's just talk about that instead. Yeah, you know, but that's <laughs> like the perfect example. Like, it was going to happen to us at some point this season with having such a good defence. Like, you know, we can't rely on them all the time and it was always going to happen um, eventually. But I just want to just highlight how good we were in the first half just because, you know, there's a lot of negativity at the moment and you've got to credit that whatever Cooper's done in between this match and the last and the ones before, whatever tweaks, it worked for the first half. Yeah. Um, I also want to highlight from the first half, something I think was a big sort of factor in what happened afterwards that I think has been overlooked by a lot of people. So you don't make a substitution on the 45th minute, 10 seconds before the half-time whistle goes, <laughs> if you if you don't know you've got away with something. Uh, Nigel Pearson knows down, down well that they've got away with a man being sent off for a second yellow card, uh, which he's probably made at least three yellow card offences, only got booked once. How he didn't get booked for the one before he got subbed off, I have no idea, because he would have got a first yellow card for 100%. You could tell from the way the ref walked over and addressed the situation. Yeah, um, 100%. He should be off the pitch. And it's not just the fact that he's been substituted and the fact that they've then continued on with 11 men. But his substitution resulted in a change of shape for Bristol City, which we obviously couldn't tell from first half because it was like 10 seconds left. 
Um, and then he's gone in at half time, and obviously they've had their talk, and I'm, I'm sure he's told them what he's expecting and how to change it up and whatever. But whatever that he's done there has changed the game. And then I'm sure we'll enter into a conversation in a second about whether that's up, you know Cooper hasn't reacted to that well enough. Um, but I think that's something that I haven't seen much mentioned on on social channels that I've seen. I just think that was a really massive factor when we're looking at the difference between the two halves. I don't know what you make of that, Jordan. It's it's definitely um, a factor for me anyway. And Pearson, like, don't don't me wrong. Like at this level, I think he's a brilliant manager. You know, yeah, yeah, been there and yeah. done it, and he's obviously got the experience to back that. And he knew straight away that his player was lucky to stay on the pitch, especially after yeah. the amount of offences that he he had made already. He wasn't willing to risk even keeping him on for an extra ten seconds. You know, he was like, right, I yeah. gotta get him off. Yeah. And you know that that doesn't really allow us then to look at Bristol City in, in a different way in the second half because it doesn't give us enough time really to assess the substitution that's been made. You know, yeah. it, it's Like you said, it's only happened 10 seconds before the whistle has been blown. Yeah, I think you'll so, credit Conor Roberts as well, which I didn't mention because he was running rings around him and was drawing all of the yeah. fouls. But um, yeah, carry yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, funny enough, I was about to mention uh, Conor Roberts. Like He was giving him a seriously, seriously hard time and even yeah. if you take away the the fouls that, you know, obviously you should have definitely been sent off. I think that's another thing Pearson was looking at was the fact that if I keep him on the pitch, you know, Connor's eventually going to, you know, he's eventually going to create something and yeah. cause more damage to him, you know, and he, he addressed it. And yeah, I mean, obviously it's worth He showed his experience, didn't he? He did show his experience. <laughs> um, definitely. Yeah. I don't know yeah. many, I don't know many managers, you know, not just in the championship, but in general, that would make that kind of substitution with that long left in the first half. Like, he he saw the situation. He knew it needed to be addressed. He didn't even bother waiting until half-time, and he just done yeah. it, you know. And yeah. that's something, you yeah. know, obviously, even though he was against the Swans, that's something I do respect a bit, you know. That's, that's, I think that's brilliant management. Yeah. yeah, you've got to give credit. I was so yeah. frustrated with it. How the, I was frustrated <laughs> how the ref has allowed that to happen. I know we can't stop the substitute, but... For me, if you're the ref, you know for a fact you've just made a bad like you've just got something wrong when the other when the manager brings the guy that you've just let not have a book in off ten seconds before you book yeah. for half time. You you must yeah, be thinking 100%. like do you know what I mean? But you know, whatever. This is, we we're not here to talk about the ref and that that time was still in our own hands. Yeah. So Lee, I don't 100%. know if you wanna talk about that and how it went forward because obviously I've seen a lot online that that, like we've just said, is showing Nigel Pearson's experience as a manager. Is it Steve Cooper not reacting and showing maybe his inexperience as a manager because it is only his second senior job um, <clears throat> season? So what do you think? Yeah, maybe a bit. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably going to be a bit negative, but um, I, I don't think I'm being too harsh. But I think I'm only negative in the sense that um, I think we all sort of Except that we could we could probably get promoted automatically. I'm only negative in saying that you know things things have got to change a little bit in order for us to get into that top two. Because um, I like we've said I've seen some of the like, the negative comments and some of them have been way over the top. Um, you know, asking for certain players to be dropped and and you know slating Cooper a bit. Um, for me, I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't think that it was him not reacting. Um, for me, they look they look gassed. I think after the first half. They, you know, they played well. It was probably a highest tempo than we've seen for ages. Yeah. Again, he hasn't made many changes. You've got you've got some players in there now who have played ninety minutes four times in two weeks, something like that. Four times in what, like fourteen yeah, well, days, maybe. Every is and two games a week me, in it for the last three four weeks. Yeah, and for me, I think that we got to sort of we got the goal in all fairness, We deserve to be one 0 up, and then um, I don't think it was just. I think Bristol sort of raised the tempo a bit. I think they sort of, they went 1-0 down. They raised the tempo. And I don't think we had a match for it. I, we just, for me, we looked gassed. Yeah. And they raised yeah. our tempo. 100%. We just looked shot to me. There were some players yeah. in there. I, we may, we may, I don't, I don't, maybe won't go too far because we'll come to the mistakes later. But um, for me, there was just a lot of leggy players in there, especially yeah. in our second half. Now, we were like sort of disagreeing a little bit when we talked about it yesterday in the group. But when you put it like that, I kind of do agree. I think what... What's happened is, in the first half, we kind of had it all of our own way. We had all the ball, and they were challenging us, so we probably did look really good. But that's because Bristol City have come here and were happy for a point. That's literally why. 
and he changed the system, whatever. Um, they came out. They were always going to come up being better in the second half. But even like if you look at Super Score, which is what we always use, even looking at the momentum chart at the start of the second half, up to where we scored, it's still all us. It, it still is. It's not as much. Like the momentum is not as high, but it is still all in our favour. So we were still on top. Obviously, when we when we go one 0 up, even though Bristol come for a point, they're now not getting a point. So they have to change. Um, yeah. And I think they changed. They got a goal ten minutes later, and they probably realised, actually, when we actually try a little bit harder, and we're pressing them, and we're doing this that or the other, they're not nowhere near as good as they looked in the first half because we're actually causing them to make mistakes and I kind of give them a lift and obviously realisation that they could probably get more I think that's probably what happened to be honest yeah 100% agree with that 100% like, like you said um, I think a lot of teams not just Bristol City I think a lot of teams where where we are and how we've been playing the majority of the season would be happy to come here and have a point you yeah. know, I think a lot of teams would look at that and think you know, if we can get a point down in Swansea then We'll take that all day yeah. long. But like you said, up until we scored, we did look the better side. You know, we, we weren't we weren't playing with the same intensity as we were in the first half. But I think the minute Wells scored the first one for Bristol City, it's like you said, I think they started to realise then, hang on, there's still plenty of time left in the game. Once we up up our game a bit, we can definitely nab more. And you know, sadly they did. <laughs> well, yeah. they just stopped us having our own way. They they showed closing down a little bit more because they were hardly closing down in the first half. They closed down yeah. and Horahan gave it away, and they scored. Yeah. So surely, as a player, you're on the pitch thinking, "Hang on, why are we not like trying a bit harder?" I guess like you know, it's not. They must have been expecting to come here, sit back, and we'll have a nil nil, and we we'll just defend all game. That's what it seemed in the first half. Pearson's yeah, only had a couple of days to work with them. So we probably yeah. would have been happy with that. But as soon as the players yeah, get that little bit of confidence, they're like, yes, go for it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it makes you think as well if they had, if they had started with that type of type of game plan as well, you know, what the score could have been. Like, a, Yeah. I or mean, the first... The would first it have been, half, yeah, it wouldn't have been all of our own way, at least, I think. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's like, um, it's like what you said just then, like, we, we did look gassed, you know, uh, towards the second half, and it makes you think, like, if Bristol City started as they finished then it could have been a completely different game altogether like it could have been worse for us but yeah i think the first half um, we we can't really take away the cre- the credit from the swans like they, they they did play well at the end of the day yeah yeah but, uh, definitely i think um yeah i think like what we go on to say about the second half like we, we should have won the game you know we should have been two nil up at half time and i think you know even if even if we're one nil up at half time and you know, maybe the red card as well. I think we go on and win the game comfortably. Yeah. Um. So it's it's just purely based on the second half of things. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The things that went wrong. Yeah. Exactly. I was um, I was I was speaking to someone yesterday, and uh, you know, I said if, if we were two 0 up, you know, I think we go on to win that game, and their response yeah. was, oh, we still would have lost because Bristol said they scored three, and I was just yeah, but Woodman myself, doesn't no. make that mistake, does he? <laughs> I was like, but no, it, it doesn't work like that. Like, you know, like yeah. the, the game uh. is a completely different game if we go in 2 nil at halftime, but the, yeah. the fact is we were nil nil at halftime, but they just couldn't grasp it, so I was like, you know what, uh, just, just just come back. No, nah, you're right. Time, you know? <laughs> it's different than they had 2 nil at halftime, and Pearson's probably there, like, look, just don't get humiliated, I'm just going to assess my players' sort of attitude yeah. rather than... Oh, we've just been battered and we're still nil nil. So let's go and try and make something of it. Anyway, um, specifically on the second half and the goals, then Horahan. So he's been absolutely slated online after this game. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone's saying since he's come in, oh, not everyone, but I've seen a lot since he's come in. He's unbalanced the team. The midfield doesn't look balanced anymore. Um, like I said in I think either the pre-match to this or the post-match of the last game. For me, if Horahan isn't on the pitch since he's come here. With four goals that we haven't scored from directly from him, uh, there's a couple of corners that he's taken have resulted in a goal. Um, didn't he get an assist or something as well? Like last, in one of the last games, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Yeah, Co- Coventry, I think. Corner, it was, I think yeah, yeah, corner. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, I know, yeah. like you said, doesn't always work directly like that, but he's already scored more goals than all of the other midfielders. Just like they yeah, don't score I mean- so many. Yeah, I, I was looking at um, some of the slam that he got, he got yesterday. I don't think it's deserved. I, I do agree to a certain extent. It does 
it does make our midfield a little bit unbalanced. I, I only to a certain extent, though, because I think I think if he's playing with Danda, the mid- yeah. then maybe you can argue that case because they're probably more a little bit more forward players, which is and they're playing at home games, which is why he's done it. And everyone's been calling for more of an attacking lineup. So, hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? I like, don't. I, you can't I don't even think. I don't even think Hurahan is um, is really the main cause of why the midfield is is unbalanced at the moment. All right, yeah, he's he's clearly a more attacking player than he is a defensive player. But I think Corey Smith not being in the middle as well. Yeah, like I, I think yeah. he hundred yeah. percent balances everything out, and he gives the other midfielders like Falta and Hurahan Grimes like a little bit more license to roam yeah. and, and perform at their best. Like, and Smith is one of those players that's just happy to yeah. to sit back and. Just keep everything together. Yeah. So I'm surprised yeah. he didn't play this match being yeah, against yeah. Bristol as well, mind. Yeah, I, I was thinking that. It's obviously his former club, isn't it? I thought like he'd be well Definitely, up for that. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I think. I, uh, go on, Lee. Sorry, go on, Jordan. My mic is always really far behind, so if I <laughs> if I step in, just keep talking. No, that's all right, mate. That's fine. Um, but yeah, the Hura hands land. Uh, I mean, I think he's got some like four goals in some like six, seven games now, and he's obviously got a couple of assists to his name. So to say that you know he's he's just a free kick merchant and this and the other like is I think that's a little bit too much. Like he's clearly a good player. We we know what he's about. He's come here and made an instant impact already. But on the flip side of it, he's not undroppable either. You know, no. like that. And I, I'd say the same about yeah. anyone. For in, me, uh, in yeah, squad. I agree with you completely. I don't think it's you can't. I think the second half. Maybe him and Dan are on a pitch. Is that's where the imbalance comes from? At the same time, I'm not yeah. criticizing either of them, but like they're not necessarily as dogged as Smith or Fulton. That's just not their game. Yeah. But you're playing yeah. at home at the same time, so you're kind of going for a little bit more of attacking lineup, which everyone has been calling for and asking for, and then they're criticizing because of it. So I'm I'm confused a little bit how everyone can, in one breath, ask for more attack, and then in the other breath, criticize the fact that the midfield is a little bit unbalanced in favor of attack. To yeah, me, I think it if, doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think if you're going to play Hurahan, you can't play Danda. Like you've got yeah. to play Hurahan with like Grimes, Falter, and Grimes yeah. Smith. Yeah, I would. I would pick the same. Yeah, I would agree. say the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. So that's Hurahan anyway. On the whole, his whole performance, I don't think he was awful. Was it was an individual error. Um, yeah, what did you want to say, Bermley? No, I think well, I just agree with what you boys said. Really, I think um, I, I think either Smith or Fulton has to play um, most games. To be honest, I agree with what you said. Um, they just bring something different than the other ones. You know, the other three don't. Yeah. Um, I think uh, um, with Smith, I think we've really sort of seen um, what he was doing now that he's been injured. I think he may go quite under the radar and he on the game sometimes. But I think the stock's probably to. gone up since he's been injured. Bit of a Jack Cork. Yeah, 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 it's a good that's, joke. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty spot on. To be fair, that's, that's we missed him fair, when we sold him. We missed assessment. him so much, and no one realised yeah. that we would miss him so much. And he's still in the Burnley starting squad now. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just one of those players, isn't it, that you don't re- realise because what everybody else is doing, how important he is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think we've done covered the midfield quite well there. I think, like like I was saying, just to wrap that up, Horahan didn't have a bad game on the whole of it. But he did make an individual error, which he does have to be accountable for that. On the goal itself, it's hard to know exactly what happened. I feel like he didn't know the guy was coming from behind him. So whether someone needs to give him a better shout, whatever. But he did play a slot, bit of a hospital pass to Matt Grimes, which gets picked off. Blame whoever you want for it. He's the one who played the ball. Um, yeah, he think, he uh... could probably do better afterwards. He's a bit slow to react to the second ball. Yeah. And then the rest is history, really. A different game after that point onwards. I think we can be quite brief. I think that, uh, go on, Lisa. Go on. I'm oh, sorry. No, I was going to say that 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 for me that first goal. That I know we got we got to put a bit of blame on Horahan because you know, it's, it's a loose ball to give away in a in that part of the pitch there. But for me, that comes back to uh, to the fitness. I think if you if you watch it back for me, I think between him, Gui, and Grimes, they all look a bit flat-footed. They all look a bit lethargic. And I yeah. think that comes down to. Uh, number of games they're playing again for me I think like I said earlier I think they gassed after 60 minutes Yeah, I think mistakes like that will happen when they're when they're knackered and you could see it I think I'm not saying it's, it's Grimes fault it's not really well it's not Grimes fault at all but like he's a bit flat footed 
but he's really slow to turn and react to that ball going over his head. I think he's got about five yards on, uh, on uh, the player running through, and he gets yeah. past him. Yeah. So I I lay a little bit of that down to the uh, down to the you know the lack of changes in the yeah yeah no that's fair. Of time we've had. I think everyone is on board that we should have made more changes. Is Cooper's going to use the first half performance to say? In his defence, they played well, but obviously in the long run of the the whole game on the balance. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the team and what we would do with that at the end. Um, okay, the second goal, Casey Palmer, obviously it hurts a lot. Uh, but to be <laughs> yeah, look, it's typical. It's straight from a corner. I'm not really sure anyone. You could argue Woodman's positioning could be better, but it's always tricky when you've got people, so many people around the goalie. We just have to look at the goal we scored against Coventry for that. Um, he's young. He's going to learn from that. I don't know if you can directly blame him. Maybe you can. Freak. Just a I freak just think, goal, I yeah. think. How often does that go in? It's just unlucky. It's really just unlucky. And yeah. in the whole balance of the game, happening as it did then, it was just the worst time for us to concede something like that because it just reflects the whole tale of two halves. Like, all luck is now with Bristol, which yeah. going back 15 minutes when Casey Palmer was giving away a penalty, you'd think maybe it's not. So, I, it's just I think... one of them. I think the two goals that we just spoke about now, um, I mean, yeah, all right, they are, well, not so much Woodman, but obviously Hurahan in the first one does have to take a little bit of blame for that. I think yeah. that's only fair. Yeah. You just know yeah, right away from that. But yeah. Ryan Bennett wasn't playing yesterday, and neither was Kyle Norton. And you look at the three defenders. Right. Don't, don't get me wrong, right? Those three defenders, they're obviously you know, quality young players, but the combined age between those three is like 61 you know, one's 20, the other one's 20, and the other one is 21. Like, I think it shows a lack of an experience. Like, Ryan Bennett, would, no, I think, I agree. Would at least called yeah. for a man on, on Hurahan. Um, and yeah. if, Bennett, if Bennett doesn't play, then Norton usually plays, you know. And I think both of them, especially in the championship, are a lot more vocal than the three young boys yeah. that were played yesterday. Yeah, that's good So, yeah. you know, I, I'm not saying Gurhi, Kabango, and... I'm going to call him Blatty because I don't want to say his... Yeah, uh, it's just Blatty, experience. But, uh, <laughs> it's just experience, isn't it, really? I, I think yeah. that's what it is, yeah, 100%. Um, we like, have spoke like, about this in, uh, yeah. in some of the other videos. And what I've said for a while now is they're both pushing on 30 or over 30 in the um, Bennett and Norton. They can't yeah. play two games a week. And he does. No. He tries to keep them in the team as you know when they're fit. And then all of a sudden they get a muscle injury. I think they've both had two or three this season. For me, yeah. just rotate each one. One of them plays a weekend, one of them plays in a week, and you're just having one of them there all the time with the younger ones. The experience yeah, is always there then. I think that would be a 100%. good system to do. And I'll just point out as well, you said yeah. about the three and the lack of experience and conceding more. They were the three that conceded most of the goals against Huddersfield. Yeah, well... That's there we are, Ben, it went off. You know, yeah. I, I, I think, um, no, sorry, sorry, I, I, was, I was only going to say again, you know, it, it just shows a lack of inexperience. It doesn't mean to say that they're bad centre backs because they're not. You know, they've shown a number of times, especially like we haven't seen much of um, the Man City boy, La- yeah, um, his name Latty, Latty Bodia, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Bodia, I think. I think. But, yeah, something like that. I'm going to call him Latty. Like we haven't <laughs> seen much of him. But Gurhi, 99% of the season hasn't put a foot wrong. Cabango, we know what he's yeah. capable of as well. It's just you can't criticize them, but sometimes you just need that bit of experience when you do things yeah. start changing, when you're a bit tired, when it's yeah. not necessarily plain sailing. You just need the yeah. cool head to I calm think, it uh, down. It comes back. Uh, it comes back to what we said about like Corey Smith, or like you sort of see in his stock now that he's been out of the squad. I think you definitely see it when Bennett or Norton come out of that squad because you know the, the the young boys again a lot of plaudits and rightly so Gwehi and Cabango and and uh, and Latty as well when he plays. I'm not going to try and say his name. I'm going to <laughs> but uh, and yeah, I think uh, I think having Bennett, especially Bennett, in the middle of them, in the middle of the two of them, marshalling them around, I think it, it, it's massive. And you can see when he takes them out of the side. And, you know, I wouldn't say that you know we we look all over the place without him, but definitely I think with that corner, he probably commands that. I think he probably heads that away. He's, he's usually in there when he with his yeah um, mopping yeah. stuff up. And I think we need him in the middle of the two marshalling, and I think he does that so well. And you notice it more when he's a. Uh, well, he's not in the team. I believe he's yeah, out 100%. for the next couple of games as well. So, yeah, I missed. think he's back. I think he's back for the Luton game. I think he miss, misses this oh, one, right. misses Blackburn. <clears throat> yeah, and I think he's back for the Luton game. So, well, let's let's hope, <sighs> let's hope he's back. Let's wrap, hope wrap him in Cottonwall until uh, until the Cardiff game. Yeah, let's hope Norton's oh, not fuck. too far away as well. Because as much stick he took after the Brentford game, again shows 
that we do miss. That's why yeah. he's starting, like you said, about over Cabango not so long ago, but it shows why he's starting over one of them. Um, okay, yeah. so I just let me just correct myself as well. Sorry, it wasn't the three that was against um, <clears throat> Huddersfield, was it? Because I don't think Lati was on. Cabango came on for Bennett, didn't he? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, Lati didn't play that game, I don't think. Did he? Yeah, no, you so who was it? Did yeah. they go? I can't remember. Norton was playing. Was it was in no. Norton, and then Bennett went off, and Cabango came okay, on. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah okay. So yeah. I just wanted yeah. to correct myself there because obviously it was incorrect uh, information. Anyway, we've been going for a while, so let's just touch quickly on the third goal. There's not really too much to say on it for me. We're um, it's what ninety seven minutes, and we are one goal behind that we're just pushing to try and yeah ninety seven minutes it was. I say pushing, obviously down the other end of the pitch, but he's just yes. trying to see if he could pick someone out, didn't he? And he takes too long. It is a goalkeeper error. It is entirely Woodman's fault, but it doesn't mean yeah. he's a bad keeper overnight. Every every single goalkeeper has done that in his career, and I will just point out Allison did it twice against Man City for Liverpool uh, a couple of weeks ago. It happens. You just you just got to learn from it and move on and show some character in the next game. You know, like. I don't think we should be all over dropping him and stuff like that, which some people have oh, called no. for. But I don't know what you no, two think I of mean, that. I think I think that's the most well, that's the biggest reactionary comment I think I've seen um, after the game was Woodman yeah. being dropped. Like at the end of the day, he's got eighteen ah. clean sheets this season. You know, Arsenal were interested in him, I think in January. Yeah. And if you said that about any keeper, you didn't mention a name and just said, "Oh, Arsenal want you," and you've kept eighteen clean sheets, you'd be like, "Well, you know, it can't be that bad, can he?" Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. And, and he's not. He's he's clearly not. He's he's a very good goalkeeper. And at, like you said, at the end of the day, like there's gonna be I, like <laughs> I don't know how many times I've seen it growing up watching football from like keepers like Buffon, Casillas, and all that. They all make mistakes, but they're regarded as one of the greatest. So I'm not saying Woodman will go down like that, but y- you get what I'm saying. Like ev- every keeper yeah. is gonna have an off day. And like I was speaking to someone about it yesterday and they were saying like oh you know that's not the menta- mentality to have that a goalkeeper is going to have a bad day and it's like well no you want you want your keeper to perform perform every single week that's just normal but the harsh reality of that is it's not going to happen you know it's, it's just not yeah it's such a high um sort of like you're in goal isn't it so mistakes are out, like intensified so much more someone else gives the ball away in the same sort of vein that he's done like in the striker role then it's probably not going to lead to a goal but yeah, if he gives the ball away, 100%. then it is. And how many times does it happen? Not very much, really, considering how many times other people lose possession. And I'm not saying he shouldn't do better, because he should do better. But everybody is going to make a mistake, especially in the. We're not even. We're in the championship, so it's not even. You know, it's not the top level of football either. So you can't really be realistic and not expect your players to be perfect every game. Yeah, and when think, they yeah um, when they make mistakes, they make mistakes. Okay, be a little bit annoyed, whatever, but you move on. Yeah, hundred percent. I think um, who said it yesterday? I think it was uh, it might have been Tom Matthews. I think he said yesterday. Um, it just proves that that's the hardest position in football. The minute you lose, oh yeah, goalkeeper, like what's he done? Yeah, you know it's, it's oh yeah, and I yeah. think. Especially after the first half with how well that went. I think everyone's kind of got to take a bit of blame for the fact we just didn't put the ball in the net. Yeah, exactly. You know, every, every, yeah. A couple of individual errors, but collectively, you got to look at that as a team performance and think, look, we should have seen that out, boys. And I'm sure that will be happening yeah. in the debrief afterwards and Cooper will be you know, showing them the first half and saying that's oh, yeah. what the ex- <laughs> expectation is, but then asking the questions why it wasn't a goal. Go on, Lee. Yeah, no, I'm just going to just echo what you boys are saying. I think uh, there's no thanks as a goalkeeper. And I think it's probably a bit harsh. I mean, he, you know, he is young. He's bound to make a mistake at some point. He hasn't, to my knowledge, I know someone might remember one, but I don't think he's made a catastrophic error since no. he's been with us. You know, he's been solid. And I think, like, his mistake his mistake is out of the way. He's not going to do that again, is he? You learn from that. He's not going to do that again. Do you know what? It um, didn't affect the result. It's coming a game that probably doesn't make a difference. Yeah, it probably, you know, it doesn't make a difference to the result. Yeah. We would have lost 2-1 and then... You know, fine, but I think uh, he's got it out of the way now. He's bound to do it at some point, and he's got it out of the way now. He won't do that again. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know many Swansea City keepers that haven't had a day like that. I mean, I'm, I'm not comparing yeah. keepers, by the way, but it's, it's very similar to like De Vries, quality keeper, but it happens. Vorm, quality keeper, same again. Fabianski, quality, but 
We've it seen centre shows... backs pass it as a pass it back to the keeper and score own goals as well. Similar sort of mistake, but we've seen that plenty yeah. of times. It, 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 well, yeah, there's nothing really to say about it, is it? Like it's one of those things that it literally just happens, and like you said, he's got it out of his system now. And knowing Woodman, come the following game, he'll. Actually, no, no, I'm not going to say it. I'll jinx it. No, never mind. He's got it. He's got it. He's, he's got it out of his system. Let's just keep it at that. Okay, before we finish, then let's just have a quick look at some of the players, some of the changes, stuff, stuff like that. What we maybe say about like changes for the next game. Um, he did make some more subs there, and everyone's saying it was a bit too reactionary. Uh, Ariola come on, Whitaker come on. I think Felton came on, didn't he? Three changes. So. Um, it was 78 minutes for Falton, 80 minutes for Ariola, and 82 for Whitaker. I will say, I have been saying he needs to make subs sooner. Um, I don't understand why Ariola's not getting more game time, because you otherwise you've just got two players up front. You're saying he's not match fit and you're not playing him more. You're giving him 10 minutes in a game. What can he really do in 10 minutes? Or like, how is he going to get his match fitness yeah. up? You've got this thick and fast run in. Surely you'd want him there so you can actually start him, but you need to get him in that position. So I would criticise him there. You should be bringing him on, regardless of the result, a bit earlier. Whitaker, he's already come out and said he sees him for the future. So I, I kind of understand that one a little bit more. Um, yeah. You could argue why he didn't bring Smith on a roll. And do you know what? When we're in a situation like we were in yesterday, I, I, I wouldn't even, like, just give Ollie Cooper a go. Sometimes there's a bit of youth like that, a bit of raw talent, just gives you a bit of magic. Just yeah, something I mean, maybe worth considering. Yeah, definitely. Um, but like you said, Ollie Cooper, why didn't we give him a go? All right, yeah. I, it's, it's one of those things with Ollie Cooper. If you know, if we still lost 3 1, I think a lot of people would be saying, why are we bringing on yeah, Ollie Cooper? You know, you should win. have brought Smith on this, that. And then, <laughs> you know, if yeah. he has a good game, then everyone be calling him from the start. But. Ollie Cooper for me, like we saw in the Forest game in the cup, like he got got himself a goal and he looks like he's got a good engine on him. To be fair, I think he he would have been yeah played well. He would have been a smart little uh, little substitution to bring on. I, I think he would have been a but, good one to bring off a dander. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would have also brought Smith on as well. Obviously, you get five subs, so there's an extra two available. We could have brought them both on. Um, anyway, going forward. Because we could talk about him and subs all day, and that we will every game, I'm sure, because it's repeat conversation that we have a lot. Into the next game, again, for me, Ryan Manning hasn't seen that enough game time this season. Um, I know yeah. Bidwell's had a good season. I don't think it's been good enough to keep Ryan Manning out of the team week in, week out. Um, again, is he going to. Corey Smith, do you think he's been back from injury for about a week or two now? Um, and again, he's not going to start Ariola or Whittaker because the same reasons. He's, Ariola's had 10 minutes game time. He's not match fit, probably still. Yeah. yeah, this this is the this is the problem. I think I think this is why Ariola needed game time in the build up for Stoke because I'm looking at Jamal Lowe, and I, I'm not saying Lowe yeah. is a bad player because he, he's he's clearly not. I know the goals have dried up a bit, but he is lucky yeah. shattered. He had a decent and, first half, but he, yeah. second half he was gone. He was just yeah, nah, he's gone. His legs are gone, and I I think if I think if Jordan Morris was fit. He would have he would have started at least oh, yeah. one of the Coventry games. I think he would have started the game City after Huddersfield, where he got injured. He came on half time, didn't he? I just feel like that was the next step. Yeah, I think he would have started. Yeah, that he was Coventry game. Game. And yeah. I'm I'm looking at. It, I think why why don't we just start Ariola? I think I think it's the perfect time to have a little bit of a change in the starting eleven because I think Brentford got Norwich next. So one of yeah. those two have got to drop yeah, points. So it yeah. might it might be a good time to change it. Um, again, back to, back to the Bidwell thing. I I'd, I'd start Manning, and, and again, there's, there's nothing against yeah. Bidwell because since we've changed to the back five or well, the wing backs, you know, he's he's been a brilliant wing back. But Manning hasn't hasn't put a foot wrong either, and he's got a good case to argue. Yeah, and I I'd, I'd go with Manning personally. Any yeah, changes think, for you, Lee? Um, yeah, well, for me, I've been saying it now for the last. I'm trying not to be too critical again because you know they you know say they've had a you know good season or anything, but um, it's only because I think we can finish in the top two. But I think to do that, I think something's got to change now because the last four games, um, I think we've been poor. I know we had six points. I know in fairness, that's you know it's a sign of a good side if they can win when they're not playing well. But I think yeah. <clears throat> something has got to change in our the way we're playing at the moment because we need to see more of what we saw in the first half and. Uh, 
it's just it's, it's becoming more apparent now how, how tired they are. I know you mentioned low. Um, and I, you know, I, I was arguing that the mistakes um, come from tired players. Um, and that's the only criticism I'm laying, laying on Cooper at the moment. I think he's not changing it enough. The fixture list we've got is absolutely mental at the moment. And he's played four games there in a row um, where he hasn't, he has, you know, he's barely changed it. Only with a couple of niggly injuries, maybe yeah. defenders that he's changed and maybe dander in or out. But apart from that, again, you've got Ayu, Roberts, Bidwell, um, Grimes, Horahan playing 90 minutes every week, and at some point they are just gonna they are gonna gas. And I think I think we're just starting to see it now. Yeah. Um, I think players like you said, Manning, like what is he gonna do? What is he gonna do to get a start? And it, and it's not it's not not leveling any criticism against Bidwell because he's been class, but. Why wouldn't you start him? Why, why, why wouldn't you give him a run out? Yeah, I, just, I don't understand. I don't understand. And it. the more you don't use these other players, then they. And he's, he's talking about Ariola's match fitness. Then their match fitness is gonna not be there because they're not playing, and they haven't played for yeah. a lot of the season. But what I will, this is, I'm just gonna raise this point. We're not gonna discuss it too much because of the time, but it's something we could probably talk about a lot in maybe a podcast. Is this lack of subs? Because I thought this at the end of last season, with the players that he got. They're not his players necessarily. Maybe they're not his signings. I'm not saying that's what I think, but it's a question that could be spoken about. Ariola, did he not want him, and he don't see him as like his part of his plans, what he wants to use? Um, he doesn't maybe feel he's got the options coming off the bench other than the midfielders because they are the ones that always come on. Is that something that maybe yeah, is the option? The, is is the reason? I think the biggest thing, one of the biggest things for us at the moment as well, you know, on Ariola, um, we're looking for goals. You know, we needed to score goals yesterday. We've got Ayu that pitches in every now and then. Um, Lowe had a, had a good spell earlier on in the season. But apart from that, I don't know, maybe Horahan, you know, started scoring. Yeah. You know? But I think the biggest, and again, I don't want to be too negative, but the biggest thing that would cost us, cost us if we don't go up is probably that we haven't signed a nine. I think, you know, we, so we keep going back to Brewster, don't we? I think if we had it, yeah. we'd, be, we'd probably be top two. I think just yeah. not, signing an, not signing an out-and-out nine and playing with two wingers by trade up front um, yeah, I, I think that that would probably cost us. But then they add that um, the guy from Southampton was it Michael Obafami? Yeah, and that that was, was that Andy nice Scott yeah. that said in his interview the other day that yeah. when he got injured and that phone call came, it was like all the plans went up in the air. But then I'm just thinking, was there no backup? Was there just one option for a striker? And then he said, obviously they went and got Morris and Ariola, but he also specifically said in his interview. But yes, of course, they are not necessarily out and out forwards. They are wide players that can play forward, which again is what you just said. That's the issue we've got with Ayu and Lou. It's just the, more of the same, really. I just, I'm just surprised, really, because the recruitment's been really good under him as well. I'm just surprised there wasn't another option when that guy from Southampton fell through. Yeah, I mean, even if it wasn't a loan, I mean, all right, yeah, I know we got to cover other little bits and bobs, but we just got 11 million for Joe. Yeah, to but they know, still signed we... the players, they just yeah. weren't the right position. So there was just none yeah. of the target for that position. I, I, an out and out number nine. And, uh, you know, I, I did some of the games we've lost this season, granted, we haven't lost many, I think it was five games. But I think we'd have a lot less than that if we had, like, a, a Brewster type player. And, like, like you boys have just said, yeah, now if we had yeah. Brewster. Ugh. We well, yeah, we've conceded the lowest amount of goals in the game I... in the league, and four of them were against Huddersfield. Three of them were against Bristol, and two of them were against Huddersfield last time we played them. Take that off our tally. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not that we didn't have to score that many more goals in a couple of matches to have won them because we haven't conceded. Yeah, but I think I, yeah, I just I like I can't get over the Bruce I think because I think you can all see that I think we probably would have been firing into the promotion places with him just because the way. He, he played it there, but you know I got to get over it. Some someday I might get over it. Yeah. I think, um, but I think like, yeah, you're right in what you say about the defense. You know, if you don't concede goals, then uh, you don't need to score that many. No, but but I that's think what I'm now, saying when is, if we had a striker as well, in, we wouldn't have needed yeah, to score yeah. that many more. But we would have scored when more in, because we had a striker. Yeah, when you're in like a well, I know people are saying this is our blip. When you're in this blip, if you've got a quality number nine, um, they'll drag you out of situations like this. Yeah. I think that's another topic again that we can discuss more yeah, in detail yeah. because they should have known about the number nine really after Brewster went because they got him in last year because of the same issue. So they got him yeah. in on loan. We didn't address it in yeah. the summer and we didn't address it um, in January. I, I guess you could argue we had Cullen and that was the reason. But again, he's raw, isn't he? So 
you can't maybe necessarily rely on him as a 20 goal striker, which is what we're probably missing if McBurney or Brewster's in the team. I think we're top of the league, so yeah, but, um, easily. I mean, um, look at look at Brentford, they, they only spent five million on uh, Tony oh, yeah. and uh, he's ripping it up. Oh, he's class. ripping it up. Yeah. yeah, he's class. Look, maybe that's uh, again, devil's advocate. Let's look at it from the other side. The recruitment only, structure uh, is quite new, it's quite young, it's done well so far. Have another full season, and maybe we'll be starting to get the full jigsaw put together. Um, Andy Scott spoke about the mess that he sort of came and took over, so yeah, give him the benefit of the doubt because he's done well with what he has done. Oh, yeah, oh, he's done yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I think, um, the only uh, the only, uh, what, the only one thing I wanted to say, I probably should have brought up earlier, and I forgot when we were saying about right. midfield. If you want to make about changes, but last one before we go, probably, but um, um. And you can kick me out of the call if you think I'm talking rubbish because it might be a bit controversial. <laughs> but I think uh, for me, uh, like Danda for me, and I'm not like, I'm, don't get me wrong, he is he is quality. Whatever they're doing at the moment for me, it doesn't work, I think, because he plays him, he's, t- he's tending to play him on the right of that midfield three, isn't he? He's got like Horahan and Grimes and he tends to be on that right-hand side. Um, whatever Whatever's going on at the moment for me, it doesn't work. I think if he's going to play, he's got to play a 10. Um, the last couple of games he's played, you sort of get the same thing. He plays well. He looks really lively on the ball and he looks class like yesterday in the first like 25 minutes. Um, and he did it on Tuesday. He played that lovely ball inside the fullback to Connor Roberts. And he has got that touch of class and he had that chance where he went through. But then it, it always seems like that he, he goes missing then after like sort of 40 minutes and he gets hooked all the time at 60 minutes. Uh, no, maybe, I, it's maybe it's no, being harsh. It's being harsh on him. Sorry, go on, John. No, no, no. I was, I, I was just going to say, that's all. sorry, man. I thought you finished. Um, that's right. No, no worries. No, I um, 100% agree with that. I think the only way you're going to get like a proper 90-minute performance from Danda is you take one of Ayu or, or Low out, keep yeah. one of them, and then Danda, you change the front two and Danda slots behind. So it's like a, a 1-1 kind of yeah. combination up top. You know, I think that's yeah, the only yeah. way you're going to see the best performance that, from Danda. I yeah. think that could work as well because I spoke about it in one of the last videos, the way that we're playing... It didn't happen so much, actually, in the first half yesterday. I think he was dropping back quite a lot to be a link, and I was working quite mm. well. Um, but against Coventry especially, Lowe and Ayu are both pushing the line, which means there's no one in that pocket behind because he's playing a midfield three and then a two. And they kept going to the wing-backs, and then there was no other option because you've got Bidwell is also pushing up. So there's like Grimes yeah. is looking forward to three people breaking the line. The defence is all stepping forward, and he's trying to thread a ball through. And that's yeah. been, I think, part of the problem why this blip has happened in the last couple of games. It seems like that's, that's happening. There's always that hole where a cam should be. So if he wants to persist with the midfield three, that could be an option where you said, use one of the forward two behind the other one specifically, yeah. have one of them breaking the lines, and then the other one that's threading the ball through to him as well as the wing backs. And um, yeah. Danda could probably do that job, I think, quite well. And there's also another way of solving a problem of tiredness with the front two without having to bring Ariola in. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, it's a good shot. I didn't. Uh... No, sorry, but um, I, I think you could probably play Ariola in that number ten position as well. Like if you decided to change it up against Stoke, you could have Ari- Ariola behind Ayu, and then that yeah. gives Jamal Lowe then the much needed rest that he, he clearly needs. Like because he's not, he, he doesn't slouch, does he? He does run his socks off every yeah. game, and it's it's start yeah, it's starting the show now. It's just his touch when he's tired, yeah. his touch is gone, and that's what that's what's doing it. But, you can um, see his head drop as well. Can't I didn't. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I didn't think of that actually. I think like this is a good point to bring up actually because you keep, you know, you keep that midfield three. You could bring like you could bring like Fulton or Smith in. You could turn into a diamond a little bit. Play, I guess. Sort of dander, turn into a bit of a diamond. You know, well, yeah, I know he just, he, I don't know, he doesn't like to change it that much as he doesn't like to be too. Uh, he did say in his pre-match this before this game that he's going to have to make tweaks to uh, for us to attack more. He actually acknowledged that, and they did attack more in the first half. Don't Option. know what he changed, but he, they did attack more. But. Um, Maybe we'll see more going forward. I don't know. Anyway, I think we could talk all day probably about this. Um, I'm oh, sure yeah. we'll we'll touch on points before the Stoke game. Um, whenever we sort that out. But otherwise, I think it's been a good discussion, lads. Um, so let us know in the comments yeah, below if you agree with what we said. If you think we missed any points, any player performances you want to highlight, just talk about it in the comments. Let us know what you think. So it's good to have a conversation and engage with what everyone thinks about the football. I think that's why everyone loves it really is because of all the different opinions. So don't forget to like the video as well if you got this far and you enjoy what we're doing and also subscribe to keep up to date with everything that we are putting out there. Um, 
we are on Spotify as well for our longer podcasts. We're looking at doing a separate sort of uh, feed, so a, a separate podcast uh, sort of section on Spotify where we'll upload the pre and post matches as well, so they're not sort of clashing in with the longer, more casual discussions. And yeah, we'll go from there, really. Let us know any feedback and what you think you, you want us to do as well. But on that note, I want to thank Lee and Jordan for coming on today. Cheers, lads. No, no bother at all. No problem at yeah, all. Sure, I'm sure we'll have you back uh, again, Joe, soon. There we are. Happy days. Just let me know. We saw someone up. Yeah, and um, that's been it for me, so thank you very much, and uh, shall see you all later. There we are. See you soon, lads. Bye-bye now.